Hey everyone, happy Chinese New Year. Apparently it's the year of the ox, not to be mistaken for the year of the pox, which of course was last year. One of my favourite news stories out of China this week was the Communist Party's decision to ban the BBC due to its quote unfair, untruthful journalism, which kind of makes me wish that Boris took a leaf out of Beijing's book. If the PM wants to sort out that thing with the French fishermen, he could do worse than start treating the English Channel the way the Chinese treat the South China Sea. Obviously don't copy everything, the genocide stuff's a bit out of whack. I'd rather make sure that the pets on Blue Peter were never involved in a cookery segment on the show, but I would like to see the UK sticking two fingers up to the green agenda and getting petrol back below 70 pence a litre like it is in Shanghai. So what does the BBC have for us this week? Well, stories on the front page include articles like What is Slovenian Cuisine? NASA's Pioneering Black Woman? And an article about, quote, racial imposter syndrome. So it's the BBC, and I'm guessing they've probably illustrated it with a picture of David Dickinson in full orange face, perhaps that time that Doctor Who was played by an African lady. In all honesty, the private sector isn't much better when it comes to newsworthiness. The Mail's website have a story about how Ben Affleck went out on a motorbike this week, and apparently Hugh Jackman owns a woolly hat. There is, of course, real news out there, but it doesn't quite match the narrative about how Britain would struggle without the help from overseas and thus we end up with a news page in inverted commas filled with social justice walkery and a relentless fetishization about Donald Trump and he's not even president these days. There's his constant ability to not pay taxes, the fact that his wife didn't divorce him, the fact that he never did any of the bad stuff the BBC threatened he would, plus he got COVID and despite it being 100% deadly he lived to laugh another day. Then we've got his recent acquittal in the Senate and his troll-like response to that was that he might well run for office again. It's hilarious really, they really want him to be in jail for something but there's, there's just no darned evidence. This of course is what happens when you fill your roster with college kids who've never been told that sometimes you don't get your own way no matter how much you scream and shout. That only works if you're Tom Cruise, and possibly for Brian Blessed, if Gordon's alive. Of course, in the real world, the story being shouted from the rafters should be that Britain's been taking off as the world leader in both COVID vaccinations as well as research into the new variants. The EU had to back down on its threat to militarise the Irish border over the issue after it realised that without Britain to co-opt, the EU doesn't actually have any military presence in Northern Ireland to use for such a thing. Bizarrely, they chose to apologise with a reference to how people make mistakes and how only the Pope is infallible. And that's an analogy that didn't go down terribly well in Ulster, and probably never would unless it was perhaps in an episode of Father Ted with an inebriated John claude Juncker playing Father Jack. Back to COVID, though. It seems to be available in many variations this year. Much like when you buy a new car, you can either get the classic base model or you can opt for a 2021 upgrade feature, you know, like a better transmission. Except that's a bad thing in the case of a virus transmission. Of course, in the BBC's world of view, Big Pharma, especially the British companies, can't be trusted or relied upon to combat the new variants. And so we should probably just stop trying, you know, give in and join with the EU and relying upon masks and capitulation and an inability to win. With that sort of attitude, it's no wonder the BBC love Wimbledon so much. Anyway, see you next week. Please subscribe.